morning, good morning, good morning, family. Happy, happy Sunday, and welcome to the Breakthrough Sunday service with the word coming from our brother Jimmy So Young, followed by prayer by our brother, Minister Jamie Wood. At this time, I'm going to turn the line over to our brother, Andrew Jimmy So Young. The lines are muted. One moment. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning Andrew. Good morning, Jackie, and good morning, Breakthrough family. I'm excited to be here with you guys this morning. I got a word from God, and I'm really, really excited to share it. I think it's going to help a lot of people. Um, But before we get into the word, let's just open up in prayer. I just ask everybody, just bow your heads and just be real present in this moment. Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for blessing us with the gift of life once again. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to come together and hear your word. Um, I ask that you speak through me today, that you anoint this word, that you allow this word to reach people exactly where they are. I come as a yielded vessel. Let there be less of me and more of you, none of me, if possible. Just use me for your will, Lord, and let this word be a seed that bears fruit in the lives of each and every person under the sound of my voice. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I'm going to be reading from this book in the Bible, a really, really short book called Habakkuk. Habakkuk, um, I'm going to begin in chapter 2. Verses 1 through 4, Habakkuk 2, 1 through 4. To give you some context, in chapter 1, the prophet is complaining to God about the violence and destruction that seems to be going unpunished. And God is answering him and basically saying, listen, I'm doing something. I'm raising up the Chaldeans who are basically straight savages. Um, They're just taking whatever they want. They're taking land. They're not respecting kings or anybody it says that their own might is their God. And Habakkuk is like, that don't make no sense, God. You about to just let these dudes keep killing the righteous like forever? So we pick up chapter 2, verse 1, and this is what Habakkuk um, says in verse 1. He says, I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look to see what he will say to me. And what I will answer concerning my complaint. That's a whole jewel right there. He said he's going to station himself on a tower, that he's looking for God to speak to him. He's expecting to hear a word from God again. He's even eager about how he's going to respond. He's expecting to have a conversation with the Lord. That's a whole word on the low. Um, We need to come to God in prayer expecting an answer. We need to be willing to be stationed where we are, and to be still and wait for a response. So verse 2 says, And the Lord answered me, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. A lot of people have heard that verse. Um, I just want to read it again. Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. When God gives you a vision, write it down. I've been saying this on this line. I'm going to keep saying it on this line because I know that it's a spiritual truth. There's a power in writing things down. When God gives you a vision, write it down. Keep it simple, but write it down. Write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run to it who sees it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It hurries to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, Wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. It might seem slow to you, but it's not delayed. It awaits its appointed time. Your time and God's time aren't the same, and your timetable is irrelevant. The vision is on God's timetable. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by his faith. God is like, listen, this dude might be an arrogant fool. These Chaldeans might be arrogant, right? His soul is not upright, but his faith? 
Oh, his faith is on point because he's fearless. And you guys can learn something from his faith. The righteous shall live by his faith. My title for this message this morning is Living by Faith. Living by Faith. First of all, let's just be honest. We can all agree that living by faith is way, way, way easier said than done because it's hard not to believe what you see. When Peter was trying to walk on water, he took a couple steps, but it says he began to sink when he saw the wind. It's hard to ignore, ignore the fact that your feet have no business hovering on water. Like, that doesn't make any sense to your mind. It doesn't make any sense to your eyes. But he took a few steps. He didn't start sinking until he saw how the wind was affecting the water. It takes faith to deny what the eyes are seeing clearly, right? Your eyes can see the wind. Your eyes can see the waves. Your eyes can't make sense of how you're walking on water, though. It takes faith to keep walking on that vision or to walk on the word that God spoke uh, in your own life, right? If, if God gave you a vision or a word two months ago that's starting to seem foggier and foggier by the minute, every single day your reality is clearly looking nothing like what God showed you in the vision and what you're believing for. Peter began to sink, and he had Jesus standing there in the flesh. I thought about that. Um, when I was preparing this message, I'm like, yo, he only has to take a few steps, and he has Jesus also standing on the water in the flesh. And his faith still wasn't enough, right? So imagine how much harder it is for us to walk on the word of God, to, to, to walk by faith when we don't have Jesus standing in the flesh, right? We don't, we don't get to – we don't have that luxury, we have to sometimes wonder if the word that we were believing even came from God. We have to, God, can you give me a confirmation that this is from you? You've got to get 100 confirmations to really even be sure that the word came from God half the time, right? But living by faith is hard, man. It's hard because we have to learn how to not believe what we see. We've all heard the expression, seeing is believing. I believe it when I see it, right? We have to unlearn that. And we have to convince our souls, our hearts, our minds, will, our mind, will, and emotions that believing will lead to seeing. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight, which implies what we see with our natural eyes will often be contrary to the word of God or contrary to the vision God gave us. In Hebrews 11, 1, faith is defined as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you can see it with your natural eyes, it doesn't require faith. People used to ask me all the time, how do I have faith that the Broncos are going to win the Super Bowl or the Broncos are going to be good when they don't look good? And I would tell them all the time, well, if they look good, it wouldn't require faith. Living by faith in Jesus and the word God spoke over our lives requires faith. In order to do that, we need to first understand that if God gives us a vision, if God gives us a word, it's a promise. This whole walk is about learning to trust God, learning to believe his promises by faith, even when it doesn't look like it's going to come to pass. And this takes relationship, right? It takes uh, spending time with God. The more we hear from God, the more opportunities we have to trust God. The more times he delivers on his promise, the more storms we go through with him, the more we realize he's a faithful God who will not leave us or forsake us. He, we have to learn how to discern the voice of God. We have to learn how to qualify our visions because not every thought or idea is from God. So we'll, we'll think we might have an experience where we're like, you know what, I thought God was telling me this, and then you realize it didn't come to pass, and it wasn't God. It actually was you. Sometimes the ideas are just born out of selfish ambition. It's just you trying to imagine and trying to picture something you desire, right? Some ideas and dreams are presented by the enemy. By the enemy of our soul, the more we get to know God, though, the easier it becomes to discern when it's God. And I could do a whole message on discerning whether it's God or not, 
But the purpose, but for the purpose of this message, I want to give you some tools on how to live by faith when you already know that the vision or the promise was from God. But the vision is stretching you past your comfort zone. It's stretching you past what you believe the limit of your faith is. It's requiring discipline. It's requiring sacrifice. It's requiring waiting. It's requiring pruning, and it's uncomfortable, and you're having to be loving, and you're having to serve even when you don't feel like it. And there's times it doesn't feel worth it. There's times it doesn't even look like the promise is going to come to pass. There's times when you're really starting to get discouraged, right? I want to talk about how to live by faith when you know you have a vision from God, but it's hard because your eyes are lying to you, and Satan is roaring in your ear. Did God really say that? Like he said to Eve, did God really say that? Right? His, he, wants, he wants you to question that word you got from God. He wants you to not believe the promise that God gave you. That's his job. His job is to snatch that word because if you stand on that word, if you stand in faith, if you resist him, you're going to be useful. He doesn't want you to receive the promises that God has for you. He doesn't want your faith to be built up. He doesn't want you to be a useful vessel for the kingdom of God. He doesn't want you to save souls. So I want to give you some tools that uh, have been helping me. But before I do that, I just want to share this vision I got from God concerning my marriage. A couple months ago, it was during a fast. I had been fasting um, every single day um, for most of the day and pretty much Almost every day I would, I would wake up at like 4 in the morning and I would just have like a word from God and I would write it down real quick in my phone. And this particular day I had this dream, and it was so clear. It wasn't even like a whole dream. It was just a moment. It literally was a, a picture. It was a vision. And I saw a picture, a vision of me and my wife standing on a balcony in our dream house, a house we've been wanting, for, wanting and believing for for years. And I saw us standing on the balcony, and I, I was wearing, like, I was dressed nice, like I had a tux on, like I've been to a gala or something. And I was giving her a beautiful ring, which I never gave her a dope ring, right? And I, and I always wanted to. And I was finally giving her the ring I believe she deserves, and I was asking her to marry me again. For those that know our story, we've been through a lot of storms. It was an infidelity 10 years ago that I kept a secret for eight years. Um, and I finally told her about two and a half years ago, and we went on this whole roller coaster for the past two and a half years. And for a lot of that time, up until last Christmas, not the one that just passed, the other Christmas, we were at a place where we were just thinking we were going to get a divorce. It wasn't going to work out. It, we were still going to be friends, but whatever. But God told me early on in that process, give me two years. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to work this thing out for you. And sure enough, almost two years to the day, my wife tells me, I'm going to be with you forever. And I have this renewed sense of relief, and everything seems to be all good. We're, we're, we're doing well, right? Well, a couple months ago, um, I get this vision. And I'm like, wow, because there's one thing, though. In spite of all this healing and all this progress we've made, she's still triggered by the word wife. She's still triggered when I call myself her husband. She's always like, what's a husband? What's a wife? Like, she still has – she doesn't claim me like that. She's still a little bit – embarrassed by, by the hurt I caused her. And, um, and I would tell her sometimes, like, one day I'm going to get you an ill ring and I want to renew our vows. And she'd be like, don't do that. You're going to play yourself, right? And uh, so I got this vision, and I was like, wow. And uh, I woke up from the dream, and I immediately put it in my phone. And the next day I put it on my vision board. I wrote down, like, I saw me and Tina in our dream house. I saw me giving her this new beautiful ring, and she looked like she was about to say yes. That's what I wrote verbatim. Write it on tablets. Make it plain, right? And um, at this time, though, we were doing well. I didn't know about a week later I would say something that triggered her, and we would go right back in the storm. We were headed for a wilderness season. She was going to put her guard up. She was going to not trust me all over again. All those feelings from the past were going to come roaring back, and I was going to have to walk by faith. I was going to have to live by faith. I was going to have to trust the vision that God gave me. There's a song that played, if you were on the line, before this uh, message started. We had some music. One of the songs I picked on purpose was Worship While You Wait. And there's something I say at the end of this song. I said, God will give you 
a picture of the promise in the negative. Right, sometimes, and I, and I was talking about the dark room and then the negatives of uh, when you develop camera film back in the day. But I said he'll give you a picture of the promise in the negative, and you just got to learn how to walk on it and how to believe it. And basically that's what I said, it's not verbatim. But it was so crazy to me when this happened because when I first got into the storm, I'm like, God, what are you doing? You just gave me a vision that me and her are going to be great in the, in the dream house. She's going to be happy. I'm going to get her a new ring. Everything's looking like it's on the up and up, and then all of a sudden you bring me to this season, and then God told me, bruh, you already said it yourself. I'll give you a picture of the promise in the negative. I'll give you a picture before you need the picture, right? I gave you a picture of the vision because you were headed into a wilderness season, because there were some things I needed to do. So let me get into these keys I have before I run out of time, because there's some things that I'm learning that are really, really helpful for when you're in a season where you have to believe a promise that God gave you and your reality is looking like the complete opposite. So um, meditate on the vision. I want you guys to write these keys down because I think they're really, really, really important keys. Meditate on the vision. That's the first key I want to give you. And this is why it's so important to write it down Make it plain so that he who sees it can run to it. You got to read it over and over and over and over and over. You got to remember the vision. You got to spend time reminding yourself. We got to remind ourselves of what God spoke and what God showed us. And we got to remember that if God said it, it's a promise. He is a promise keeper. And even if it seems slow, it will not delay the vision is for its appointed time. When we meditate on the vision, we begin to learn how to see with our eyes closed. Right? You can close your eyes and you can see that vision over and over and over and over. Which brings me to my next key. Protect the vision. Close your eyes if you have to. Sometimes we got to close our eyes. We got to stop looking at the wind completely. Right? We got to guard our hearts. The, the Bible says, guard your heart, your mind, will, and emotions above all else because everything you do flows from it. That's Proverbs 4.23. There's another scripture. Bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. I had this Instagram post from a gospel artist that was rapping about leaving if a person isn't cherishing you or appreciating you or, or making you feel celebrated, right? We see these posts all the time about going where you're celebrated and not tolerated and choosing yourself. And if they aren't making you happy, then you got to leave, right? There's all sorts of competing ideas. And sometimes there'll be gospel artists sharing. Them. Sometimes there'll be words from the Bible, right? Remember, the devil used the Bible to tempt Jesus in the wilderness. Throw yourself off this thing. The Bible says, He'll catch you. and You know what I mean? He's telling them Bible. But Jesus spoke the word right back to him. Jesus spoke the words God put in his mouth and put on his heart. So what did God speak over your life? What vision did God give you? Because God told me what he put together, let no man separate. God showed me a vision of me renewing my vows the night I met Tina. God gave me a vision of me asking Tina to remarry her or to, to remarry me. Um, so no devil, you can't have my marriage. No devil, I will not walk away from this marriage because there's some Instagram posts that are making me think that's what you want me to do. You gave me a vision. You gave me a word. God made me a promise. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I'll close my eyes if I have to. I'm protecting the vision God gave me. Guard the vision. Protect it. Right? If there's a thought, if there's a word, if there's a sermon, it doesn't matter. If God gave you a vision, you bring that thought, you bring those words into the obedience of Christ. You rebuke those thoughts if you have to. You say, no, 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 no. I rebuke that. that, that those words aren't for me. Those words get behind me, Satan. Right? I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bring those thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ because it's contrary to what God spoke to me, what I wrote down. You got to learn how to protect the vision. Meditate on the vision. 
Get it deep down in your soul so you can see it with your eyes closed. And when the wind is raging, you got to be able to close your eyes and go back to the vision. You got to remind yourself of the vision. You got to protect the vision that God gave you. And here's another key, and this is the most important key I'm going to give you, and the most important key for me in this season, in the, any wilderness season I've been in, when it was about waiting for money, when it was about uh, waiting for a vision to come to pass for my marriage, when it was about believing my daughter will be healed, it was, this is the most important key, worship while you're waiting. If we worship while we're waiting, there's, there's just something about the power of worship. When you, when you stand on faith, when you can praise God in the storm, the devil don't even want to be near you when you're praising God like that. It's a power that's flowing through you. It's aligning your spirit. You're remembering, you're remembering to be grateful. When you start praising God for the things he's done to you, when you start met, uh, done for you and in you and to you, um, when you start meditating on those things and you start reminding yourself, like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It looked bad before, but I didn't die, right? It, I was five months behind, and then I was five months ahead. God is faithful. God has been faithful. Thank you, God, for being faithful. Thank you, God, for sustaining me through that storm. Thank you, God, for waking me up this morning. Thank you, God, for waking up my kids this morning. Thank you, God, that I still have running water. Thank you, God, that the marriage didn't end on Christmas last year. Thank you, God, that I woke up to my wife today. Thank you, God, for another opportunity to love my wife. Thank you, God, for another opportunity to love my children. Thank you, God, that I still have a job. Thank you, God, that I still have a promise from you. Thank you, God, for reminding me of how faithful you've always been. When you start getting in that space, you start feeling it in your soul. You start feeling it in your soul how good God is. You don't even start thinking about the nonsense the roaring lion is trying to say. Your spirit is singing too loud for you to hear the lion. Your spirit is speaking right now. Your spirit is drowning out the voice of the liar, and the liar don't even want to be around your worship. He's running. When you stand firm on that faith, when you worship while you're waiting, things start to change. You guys remember, or the people that have been on the line, you remember me sharing that story about how I gave God a praise when I was five months behind, and the next day I found out I was going to be seven months ahead. That's how God moves. Praise, worship while you're waiting. And, and the, they say the praises go up and the blessings come down. That is a – people say it for a reason. <laughs> it's, a, it's a saying that's been around church folk coming out lips for thousands of years for a reason. You praise God and you see the blessings in his life. Sometimes praising God just opens your eyes to start seeing the blessings he already gave you. That's what I was trying to tell you before. You start meditating on and remembering what God already did. He don't got to do nothing else for me for me to know he's good. You ain't got to do nothing else, God. You did enough. I got, to, I got to know that you are good. I got to know that you love me. I got to know that you care for me. I got to know that you provide for me. I got to know that you protect me. I got to see that already. You don't even have to show me it again. I'll die thankful. You've already done enough to show me that you are worthy to be praised. You died for my sins so that even when I die, I get to spend eternity in perfect peace. That's worth giving God a praise right now. Give him a praise right where you are and thank him for already doing enough to show you that you are enough and that he loves you and that he is more than enough. Bonus point, bonus point, there's purpose in the waiting. I just learned yesterday I just learned this yesterday, I never heard this before, that the word wilderness in Hebrew doesn't even have a negative connotation. Like, we make that sound like, oh, it's a wilderness season, it's a bad thing, I'm struggling now, the provision is stopped, or uh, God is making me wait for something. Like, that's a bad thing that you're in the wilderness. But in the Hebrew culture, the word itself, wilderness, actually means the place where you meet God. That was powerful when I heard that. I was like, what? wait, what? The wilderness is the place where you meet God. When, when the Israelites were in the wilderness for 40 years, that was them getting to know God. That was God showing them, hey, listen, 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 listen. I got you. 
I'm going to give you manna every day. I'm going to purify this water right here. I'm going to show you how powerful I am in this wilderness. In the wilderness is where I parted the Red Sea and showed you my power. In the wilderness is where you're going to see uh, Moses speak to a rock or actually bang on a rock and make the water come forth. In the wilderness is where you get to know who I am. And then in the promised land, you get to live off those principles. You get to remember the things I taught you, and you get to start learning how to harness that power yourself and letting me work through you. You get to garden with God, like we talked about last week. So there's things that happen in the wilderness. There's things that happen in these seasons. God prunes you. God takes things off of you. God builds your faith. God shows you who you are. Embrace these wilderness seasons. They're a blessing. They're an opportunity to meet God, the wilderness is where you meet God. So I want to remind you the three points today. When you're in a wilderness season, when you're waiting for the vision to come to pass, and when it's not looking like what God showed you in the vision, when you have to walk by faith, when you have to live by faith and not by sight, living by faith, these three keys are going to help you live by faith. Meditate on the vision. Meditate on it. Keep rehearsing that vision in your mind. Keep thinking about when it's going to come to pass. Feel it. Feel how good it's going to feel when you get there. Think about all that was in that loaded vision. Like, oh, shoot, God showed me I'm going to get the house I want. He showed me the view. I've never been in that house. I've seen the view from the porch. I saw Tina smile. I seen the look on her face when she seen the ring. I'm going to have some bread. I was looking young. My skin was looking nice. My tuxedo was looking nice. My body was right. I got a vision to hold on to in this wilderness, right? Meditate on the vision. Protect the vision. That's the second one. Protect the vision. Make every thought that comes against that vision obedient to what God said. And worship while you're waiting. It might seem slow, but he's a man of his word. It will come to pass. God's promises you can take to the bank. He is not a man that he should lie. You keep praising him every step of the way. That's how you live by faith. I'm going to ask my brother Jami to close us out. I know my time is up. I thank you guys for your time. I pray that this blessed you. And after he prays, um, we're going to do a salvation prayer. And then we'll send you on your way. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother um, Andrew, for that word this morning. Um, Let us go straight into prayer. Um, Good morning to everyone. Happy Sunday. Father, we thank you and praise you. We worship you, Lord. We bless you. We just honor you for this day. We just want to lift you up, Lord, and speak well of you for your good God. We thank you for the wedding experience. We thank you for the promised land. We thank you for transition. We thank you, Lord, for patience, love, the fruit of the Spirit. We thank you for all the good things you're doing in our lives, things you're teaching us and showing us by your Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for loving on us, loving us with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. We thank you, Father God, even in the good times and in the bad times, we are learning to still worship you and praise you, knowing that this shows that we trust you and we have faith in you, Father, that no matter what's going on around us, that you got our back, you got our front, our side, above and beneath, Lord God. Your plan hasn't changed for us. Lord, I thank you for the word that came forth, the understanding, write the vision and make it plain. Now, as we continue to run, continue to meditate on it, we'll run with it and see it come to pass. Thank you, Lord, for visions for all of our lives, Father. You have a, a future and an expected end for us. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven says, you know the thoughts that you think towards us, plans of peace and not of evil, to give us a future and an expected end. You have a vision for our future. It is a successful vision in every area of our lives. You have an end that you expect us to walk into by faith, Lord. So help us to spend that time with you, Lord God, to receive the vision, to receive the dream, Lord God. And then, as above, to protect that dream and vision, to set boundaries and, have, and make predetermined choices, Lord God. And then worship you, Lord, while we wait, Father God, for the manifestation of what you've shown us. I also pray for those who have lost hope, those who have forgotten about the vision and dream you've given to them, Lord God, through whatever has been going on in their lives. Praying you will re-stir up, Lord God, um, that vision and show them those visions and dreams. Help them to dream again, to see the future that you have for them again, Lord God. As you showed Brother Andrew the, the beautiful home, his dream home with his wife, and renewing his vows, Father. That's so awesome, Lord. Your plan hasn't changed, and you're for 
marriages. You force successful marriages. No matter what has happened in the past, Jesus shed his blood to do away with the past. And the future is so bright, Father, for us, for your people, Lord God, because it brings you glory, honor, and praise that we can get through tough times, Lord God, and give the devil no credit, give him no glory, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. We can continue to have our foot on the devil's neck and continue to enforce the victory that you've provided for us, Father. Thank you. There's nothing to catch you off God. Nothing catch you off God. There's nothing where you say, well, I didn't know that was going to happen. That's, you know everything. You already made a plan for everything that we're going to face and go through, every bad mistake we make. Your plan hasn't changed for us. The vision hasn't changed. The dream has not changed. Help us to dream again. Help us to see things the way you see things, Father God, and to protect it, Lord God, with everything and to worship you and praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray these three steps, Lord God, we'll meditate and get them down into our spirits and walk them out by faith, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And again, we thank you. We're praying for next week's sermon. Lord God, our brother will receive the word for us for next week, Father God, in Jesus' name. Expecting something good from our brothers and sisters this day and the rest of the week. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Powerful prayer, my brother. We appreciate Praise you, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Sitting everybody on our way. Um, I'm going to ask Jackie to mute the line as we say a prayer for salvation for anybody who doesn't know Jesus. If you feel something stirring in your spirit right now, you just want to invite him into your life and into your heart. You want to get on the potter's wheel and begin being molded and have your life transformed. Um, we want to ask that you say this prayer. Um, we invite you to stay along with us. And we also ask anybody who wants to just refresh and re- renew their relationship with God. Maybe you've accepted him before, but you kind of backslid and you want to just recommit your life to him. You can say it as well. And anybody and everybody on the line that just wants to say it for the sake of everyone else on the line, we invite you to say it as well. Um, did you mute the line yet, Jackie? Maybe yes, the, yes, the line has been muted. It's muted. Okay. All right. So just repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to save me from sin. I believe he died on the cross and rose again so that I would be forgiven. Today I trust him as my Savior, and I will follow him as Lord. From this day forward, guide my life and help me do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much, Brother Andrew, for that powerful, powerful word. As always today, I wrote my notes down. I'm actually going to put the notes up on the um, social media site for those of you who want to look at them or review them again. Thank you, Brother John Me, as always, for closing us out with that beautiful, powerful prayer. Uh, Family, I want to thank you again for joining us um, this morning for the powerful Sunday service. Uh, Remember that each and every day, Monday through Friday, we do come to this line together in unity, and we reset our day in the presence of love, family unity, and in the presence of God. On Monday, our prayer leader is going to be our sister of this line, the most powerful, loving um, Angela Mays. She's going to start us out on our week. So be sure to tell a friend, tell a friend to come start your week in a powerful way on a breakthrough morning line. I'm also um, happy to let you guys know that um, the social, our private social media site is now open for all of you to join. I am working on an email now, right now, to send each and every one of you, if you're not already on the line, um, simply click on the link. You will be getting an email today or either a text today. Simply click on the link and follow the prompt. Um, you are encouraged to invite anybody that you want to come and get this light. You know, what God is shining his light, the world is dark, but our light will continue to shine, and we are going to use the social media site as a tool and a vehicle for that. Um, I want to thank you again, Andrew and Jamie. I want to say this about Andrew. Andrew, what a powerful word you have today. So many young people 
Um, I know I know that the word was about writing the vision down and make it plain, but I got so much. I just love hearing you talk about your marriage and how you and how and how you fight for your marriage and how you depend on God to keep your marriage together. So, you know, right now a lot of people are going through challenging challenges with their marriage, and I think that they really, really can benefit from hearing that message of how you uh, really just, you know, work to continue to keep that thing strong and refuse, refuse, refuse to let go of that vision. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So thank you so much for that word. Thank you for your testimony. Um, Break for the morning, family. Thank you for calling in for another beautiful, powerful Sunday service. I look forward to hearing from you tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. Have a beautiful and blessed day. I love you. I love you. I love you. Peace. Love you. I love you. Peace. Peace.